Hello music fans, welcome to another episode of What's New 2023, where I talk about new albums that came out in metal, rock, and progressive music. Today I'm going to talk about six albums that came out on May 12th, um, but only five artists. So one of the artists on the, on the list released two albums in the same day. I'm going to talk about them in my order of preference, starting with Omnirod and their album The Immensal Rise. This is progressive death metal, and it's the third album by this Belgian band, but it's the first of theirs that I've heard, and I've got to say, I was blown away. Uh, this will definitely be on my year-end top 40 list. I need some more listens just to figure out how high up it will be, as it's a possible top 10 or top 20 contender. If you're a fan of bands like Wilderun, Neobla Viscaris, Devin Townsend. It's kind of like a mixture of those three bands together and every member of this band really brought their A-game in their performances here. The compositions are also really epic journeys and they really take you on an adventure through a lot of heavy brutality as well as beautiful soft moments and melodic parts. Next I want to talk about Veil of Maya and their album Mother with the M in square brackets, so it's kind of like mother, but maybe it's other. I'm not sure uh, what is meant by that title. Um, but this is progressive metalcore, and it's kind of genty. It's got some deathcore and some pop influences too. Lots of catchy poppy hooks. It's the seventh album by this American band. The guitar riffs are really genty, reminiscent of Meshuggah and Periphery. A lot of heavy, almost deathcore, brutal vocals and breakdowns that are almost as extreme as Lorna Shore, but maybe not quite. Um, but then there are also some really catchy pop hooks and choruses, like what Periphery does as well on their softer moments. And I think fans of Periphery, Meshuggah, and Born of Osiris will really like this. At this time, this is in my top 40 of the year, but it might not be there at year ends. Um, I, I don't think it'll be in my top 40 at the year's end, but it is there now. Um, I'd like to see this band push the boundaries a little more on their next release. They're clearly very talented at writing great riffs, great songs, great hooks. But so far, they really only have these two modes to their sound, I find, just the extreme genty parts and then the catchy poppy hooks. And I'd like to see them incorporate more styles. Um, kind of like Periphery, but I also don't want to see them copycat Periphery. Like I think I need them to bring in more styles of their own and give, bring their own unique flavor. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Cattle Decapitation and their album Terracite. And this is technical death metal with some grindcore influences. It's the eighth album by this American band. I'm not too familiar with this band. I've definitely heard the name, uh, but this is the first album of theirs I listened to in full. I listened to the single We Eat Our Young first, and then I added this to my listening list. I expected this would be ridiculously brutal, but in a fun way. And yes, it is. So put on your mosh pit shoes before listening to this. There's lots of blast beats and extreme vocals. Actually, it seems like May 12th is kind of the day of extreme metal because everything on my list uh, today is extreme metal. Sorry for the uh, softer prog rock fans in, in my audience. There's not really much for you from May 12th that I could find. Uh, I'll be talking about some softer prog rock uh, next week when Yes comes out on May 19th with their new album. Uh, but yeah, it's all heavy stuff today. Cattle Decapitation may be the heaviest thing on this list. Um, lots of blast beats and extreme vocals. However, there are some melodic vocal parts. I didn't know if there would be with Cattle Decapitation. I thought it might be brutal the entire time. But there are some kind of melodic vocal parts that but they have this very weird and interesting timbre to them. Kind of like thrashy and harsh but melodic at the same time. I'm trying to remember which thrash metal band had vocals that sound like this. It's one of the kind of classic ones from the 80s. Um, I don't even remember. Uh, but there's 
their vocals remind me of some thrash metal band. If you know who I'm talking about, put it down in the comments. Um, the clean vocals specifically. Clean. Um, but yeah, this is for fans of The Faceless, Death, and Cynic's debut album. Um, but there's it's even more extreme, brutal death than those. Um, my favorite track at the moment is a Photic Doom. And next I want to mention the Amity Affliction with their album Not Without My Ghost. This is melodic metalcore with post-hardcore influences. It's also an eighth album. Uh, this band's from Australia. My favorite track at the moment is Show Me Your God. And then the last band that I'm going to talk about is the band that released two albums on May 12th. It's the Acacia Strain. The, uh, my favorite of the two was Failure Will Follow, which I think is more different for them and has them going in a direction that they don't do as often. I believe the other album they released, Step Into the Light, is more like what they normally do. But Failure Will Follow, it's still metalcore, but it's got some like... I don't know, it's like, yeah, it's still metalcore slash deathcore, but not really. It's like kind of slow and sludge metal and doom metal all mixed in there. And I guess this is their 12th album. And the other one, Step Into the Light, is their 11th album. Very cool that they released two albums in the same day. And very cool that they're very different and that Failure Will Follow represents their sludgier side. It has longer, slower, doomier songs. They feature some collaborators on here. It's three songs and a 40 minute runtime. And Step Into the Light doesn't have the sludge or the doom influences as much. It's more a straightforward metalcore, deathcore album. I don't even think there's any melodic singing. I don't think there's much melodic singing on Actually, there is melodic singing on the slower one, Failure Will Follow, but it might be the guest collaborators. I don't think there's much melodic singing on Step Into the Light. It's very harsh. Uh, it's under 25 minutes and just has a bunch of short, fast, heavy, harsh, and intense songs with screaming. Um, both are pretty good, but nothing amazing that I'll go back to that often. Uh, but I thought it was cool that they released two in one day and that they're so different. And that's it for my recap of six new albums that I checked out from May 12th. Let me know if there's any other cool stuff in metal, rock, or prog, or even some genres that are outside of my wheelhouse but you think that I'll be interested in. Leave some suggestions out in the comments. And what did you think about these albums that I mentioned? And stay tuned for next time. Until then, peace out.